Hey guys, I thought it would be a good idea to record some short videos of me explaining some diseases or anatomical physiologic processes that would be pretty easy to fit into a short video and give you guys a good introduction on. So I decided that EPM, equine protozoal myeloencephalitis, would be a pretty good place to start. So let's break it down. Starting off with nomenclature, what's in a name? Um, equine, obviously it infects horses. And the next key part is protozoal, meaning that it's a protozoa. So the same way that a disease could be caused by a ba uh, bacteria or a virus or a rickettsia, this one is caused by a protozoa. And a protozoa is another type of parasite. So they're eukaryotic, they're a little bit more advanced than bacteria are, and so they fit into the parasite category along with things like lice or fleas as well as cyathostomin or Parascaris corum. So it is technically a parasite because it is a little more complex. Now into the myeloencephalitis part, it starts off with myle which typically means pertaining to the spinal cord. So we can already guess that some of the effects of this disease are going to be involving the spinal cord. Encephal, meaning the brain, pertaining to the brain. So we might see some neurological effects as well. And finally, litis with itis, meaning inflammation. So swelling. So from this, we can guess that this disease, this protozoa causes inflammation of the brain and spinal cord. And that's um, a pretty good start. So infection, what is causing the infection? It's caused by this puppy right here, which is Sarcocystis neurona. And Sarcocystis neurona is, as I said, a protozoa. And it is also a parasite like we talked about. So this is a eukaryotic type cell and it's going to infect the horse from Possums, on the next slide, possums. So possums are considered the definitive host of EPM, Sarcocystis neurona, because they're the host in which Sarcocystis neurona produces its infective stage. So they're going to be infected by Sarcocystis neurona. It's not going to cause any ill effects in them. However, they are going to start shedding the sporocysts, which is the infective um, infective piece of EPM or the infective stage of EPM. So at this point, the possum is going to shed the sporocyst and the horse is going to come along and ingest it. When the horse ingests it, that's going to mature and eventually make its way to the um, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system with the spinal cord. That's kind of the very quick and brief version of infection with Sarcocystis neurona. And how is it going to manifest? We're going to see neurological symptoms, which for EPM is shortened to the three A's, ataxia, asymmetry, and atrophy. So ataxia, you can think of like you get in a taxi to go from place to place, and the A prefix meaning kind of the opposite. So they're going to have problems getting from place to place. And commonly you'll see this in one gait or another. So a horse might have a really hard time cantering, um, but they might be fine walking. You're also going to see asymmetry quite likely, meaning that they're going to develop very unevenly. They might start to atrophy, so losing muscle on one side and not the other. This horse is a pretty extreme example and it's likely um, Diseases don't really tend to shout at you what they are, but this is an example at which the disease is saying, this is clearly EPM. So um, look out for those three. I don't think any of your books specifically mention these, but it's a really easy way to remember kind of the biggest signs of EPM. You also might see some more particular things like the horse might droop on one side of its face. It might drool some having a lot of trouble balancing, maybe walking in circles, kind of those sorts of things that are controlled by the nervous system. So how are we gonna diagnose this? Likely you might suspect it, maybe the horse is losing a lot of top line muscle, they're 
having trouble picking up their canner one way or the other, or they're not as balanced in it as they usually are. So your vet's gonna come out and they'll probably do some initial things to assess if they think it's really worth looking into, such as doing a tail pull test like you can see her doing here. She's essentially tugging on the tail as the horse tries to walk forward. And if the horse kind of stumbles, has a really hard time balancing themselves while she's doing this, you might suspect that EPM or another neurological disease is to blame. You're also probably, if maybe they essentially fail the tail pull test, you might try and detect antibodies either within the blood or the cerebrospinal fluid that surrounds the brain and spinal cord. That will then be sent off to a lab and tested to see if any of the antibodies are there. And antibodies are the body fighting back against a specific antigen that it detects. So it'll detect some part of Sarcosis neurona and it'll say, oh, we need to fight this. And it'll produce antibodies. And we're actually able to determine if those are present in the blood or the cerebrospinal fluid. And if they are, they're called seropositive. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be displaying clinical signs. They might have the antibodies in their blood and they don't appear sick. Um, maybe there's not enough of the protozoa or they cleared the infection themselves. And it's quite common for horses to be seropositive, uh, especially for this and not actually show clinical signs, of clinical manifestations of the disease. You also might want to get neck radiographs in order to um, determine that it is not wobblers. Wobblers is caused by essentially a compression of the spinal cord within the cervical region. So if you did uh, neck radiographs and you determine that the spinal cord was being compressed, you might say, oh, I really don't think this is EPM, it's likely wobblers. So if we eventually come to the diagnosis that this horse has EPM, they're likely going to be treated for it. And the treatment that you really need to worry about is Marquis. That's probably the most uh, well-known treatment and it is so very expensive um, to give to a horse. So oftentimes they'll want to make sure that the horse, they really do think has EPM. So Marquis will be the drug of choice commonly, but these um, protozoal and rebalance are two other options and Commonly, vets would combine these two drugs prior to rebalance being an option on the market, but now that it is FDA approved, it's pretty uncommon and they likely should not be just combining these two drugs on their own uh, since rebalance is an option. You also want to consider supportive treatment. So not just treating the protozoa itself, but also treating some of the signs and trying to um, kind of decrease the, the negative effects that the horse might be feeling. Oftentimes they'll supplement with vitamin E for a lot of neurological problems and specifically for EPM anti-inflammatory, you're going to want to give anti-inflammatories like corticosteroids, bute, banamine, DMSO. And also keep in mind that you probably want to know the long names for these like phenobutazone, that one kind of is a little more obvious, um, dimethyl sulfoxide for DMSO stuff like that. Next, recovery. So say your horse gets EPM, you do all the diagnostic testing, you treat with your drug of choice, we're going to pretend it's marquee, you do all the supportive treatment, give them anti-inflammatory, supplemental vitamin E. Now they're on the road to recovery. And this is kind of tricky and it depends horse to horse. Some of the damage might be permanent, meaning there's nothing you can do about it. The neurological system is extremely complex and very difficult. It's not that great at regenerating most of the time, especially in adults. So rehabilitation might be very slow, but slowly but surely you may be able to start doing more intense exercise with your horse, getting them some of that balance and um, really cadence back in their stride. So it is possible for them to recover given enough um, time and patience and effort. 
but that means that our focus should be on prevention since recovery isn't always the best option. And this is the case for a lot of neurological diseases like rabies, West Nile virus, you're going to want to, for those, vaccinate. We do not have an EP in vaccination, however. So for rabies and those ones, you're going, everything, all neurological diseases, prevention is the key. And how are we going to do that? We're gonna focus on how the horse gets infected, which is from possums. So we're gonna to wanna to keep our feed in a closed container, making sure that no possum feces can get in there, as well as keeping rodents out of our barn and possums out. And uh, making sure that we keep clean water sources since possum feces can also infect the water. And finally, not feeding them on the ground. So really all of these are just kind of logical steps in order to prevent possum feces from getting in the horse's food. So yeah, that was kind of my take on a really quick introduction to a disease, and I thought that was a pretty good one to start out with, but please let me know if there's anything else you would like to see or not see, or just let me know. Thank you guys so much.